Before Wi-Fi blanketed every corner of our lives, there was a box that stood between you and the internet. If you grew up in the early 2000s or earlier, you probably know it well. That chorus of high-pitched words, crackles, and static wasn't just noise. It was the sound of possibility, the sound of connecting to a vast digital world through a humble box we called the modem. Today, we're taking a trip back in time to explore the history of the modem and how it shaped our online lives right here on History of Simple Things. The word modem comes from modulator demodulator, a device that converts digital signals from a computer into analog signals that can travel over traditional telephone lines and vice versa. But did you know that modems were actually invented before the internet even existed? The first modems appeared in the 1950s, created for the U.S. military and defense systems like the SAGE project, which used modems to connect radar sites. These early modems weren't used for browsing or chatting. They were about national security. Think huge room-sized computers talking to each other across telephone lines at incredibly slow speeds, about 110 bits per second. That's like trying to send a text message through Morse code. By the 1960s and 70s, modem technology started trickling into commercial use. AT&T, then a telecom giant, introduced modems that let businesses connect to remote terminals or mainframe computers. The Bell 103 modem, launched in 1962, became the first commercial modem it operated at 300 bits per second. To put that in perspective, that's about 0.03% of the speed of your average home internet today. The 1980s were a turning point. Home computing was on the rise thanks to machines like the Commodore 64, Apple II, and IBM PCs. But how could these new home computers connect to each other? or to distant databases? The answer, dial-up modems. In 1981, Hayes Micro Computer Products introduced the Hayes Smart Modem. It was a groundbreaking innovation. For the first time, users could connect to a network without needing an acoustic coupler or complex technical steps. This was the era of bulletin board systems, or BBSEs. Before the modern internet, people would call BBSEs with their modems to read messages, download files, or play simple games. It was like the local library and arcade rolled into one, except online and often hosted in someone's basement. Then came the 1990s. If the 80s were the modem's awkward teen years, the 90s were its coming-of-age story. The World Wide Web was born in 1991. Suddenly, everyone wanted to get online. Modems evolved quickly, increasing from 14.4 kilobits per second to 28.8 kilobits per second, and then to 56 kilobits per second, the holy grail of dial-up speeds. Internet service providers, ISPs, like AOL, CompuServe, and Earthlink sprang up, offering dial-up access to the growing internet. People were using modems to check email, browse early websites, and chat on ICQ or AIM. The early internet was magical but flawed. Dial-up blocked phone calls, and picking up the phone could cancel your download. Despite its charm, dial-up was slow, painfully slow. Downloading a single song could take 10 minutes or more. Streaming video was out of the question, and images on websites loaded line by line, sometimes taking a full minute to appear. Still, millions of people depended on it. In 2000, more than 40% of American homes used dial-up, and in some parts of the world, they still do. 
Dial-up modems made the internet accessible before high-speed networks were widely available. The writing was on the wall by the early 2000s, as broadband internet, like DSL, cable, and later fiber, became more widespread, the modem's reign began to fade. Broadband was always on, didn't tie up your phone line, and was much faster. Modem manufacturers started to pivot. Hayes, the pioneer of early smart modems, filed for bankruptcy in 1998. ISPs slowly phased out dial-up support. Even AOL, once the giant of dial-up connections, moved to focus on content and media. By 2010, dial-up was all but extinct in most urban areas. Yet, in rural or remote locations, it still lingered, offering a lifeline where broadband hadn't reached. So why should we care about a box that most people haven't used in over a decade? Because the modem didn't just connect us to the internet, it connected us to each other. Modems were the gateway to the first digital communities, when connecting meant more than tapping a screen. You had to wait, you had to be patient, and you had to want it. Modems taught a generation how to explore, problem solve, and communicate in a brand new way. They were clunky, noisy, and slow, but they were the foundation for everything that came next. Now, modems haven't completely disappeared, they've just evolved. The modem in your house today, if you're using cable or DSL, is still performing the same basic function, translating digital data into a form that can travel over physical lines and then back again. It's faster, quieter, and way more complex, but the principle is the same. So the next time your Wi-Fi acts up or your fiber internet drops for a few minutes, Take a breath and remember, there was a time when just checking your email took a few tries, a phone line, and a whole lot of patience. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.